Hey folks, uh, today we're going to do a video on how to pre-flight or do a pre-flight inspection on a Piper Warrior. Uh, this is our 1979 uh, Piper Warrior and uh, we're just going to go through the steps of getting it ready for a flight. Now before we get going, I just want to say a couple of things. I'm a pilot. I'm an airplane owner. I'm not a flight instructor. So this, this video is for your entertainment, it's for the fun of us making it, and it's not intended to be flight instruction. If you need flight instruction, or if you need to talk about how to do a pre-flight inspection on your airplane, go see a flight instructor. Go see somebody who's certified to do that for you. And take a look at your pilot operating handbook, okay? So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this pre-flight inspection. All right, so the first thing that we do after we get the hangar opened up here, and even if your airplane's not in a hangar, you wanna just take a look at the overall appearance of the airplane first. You just make sure that all your wheel struts are still inflated properly, the airplane's not sitting crooked. Uh, you might wanna take a quick look in your fuel tanks because if you're gonna need fuel for the flight, now would be a good time to call the fuel truck. Uh, but for us today, we know that these, uh, these tanks are full because we filled them up after we flew last time. And that's the, one of the nice things about having a hangar like this. We're really lucky. Um, there's just the two of us who own the airplane. Nobody else flies it but us. So we know that when we put the airplane in this hangar and we lock the door, it's gonna be in the same condition it was left in the last time we used it. So anyway, we know we have fuel. We'll talk about fuel a little bit later on in the inspection. But now the first thing is to go around here. We're gonna open up the doors and we're going to begin our pre-flight inspection inside the airplane. So we're going to take the, the keys here, get the airplane opened up for our pre-flight inspection. Up here on the wing. And even though we keep the hangar locked and we keep the airplane in the hangar, we still lock the doors. Uh, we can't have too much security. You know, some of the things that are around airplanes are expensive and we want to discourage any sort of nonsense with that. All right, one of the things before we go flying is we need to make sure that from a documentation perspective, the airplane is legal to fly. So um, there's a handy acronym for the documentation that you're required to have on board the airplane for a flight, and that's Aero. So, uh, most pilots know this. The A uh, stands for Airworthiness Certificate. Uh, we're supposed to have a current Airworthiness Certificate, and it's supposed to be displayed in the airplane so that it can be seen. So uh, if you take a look inside our airplane, there on the back bulkhead, we have our Airworthiness Certificate. It's current, and it's displayed. So we're all good there. So I'm going to reach in the back here in the luggage department, and the uh, second R in Aero is going to be uh, a registration. Uh, we have our notebook here, which contains a lot of documentation. I'm not going to go through it all with you, but inside this book is our current registration. Uh, the second R in Aero is for radio station license, and there used to be a rule in the United States where you had to have a radio station license for the radios in the airplane issued by the FCC in order to operate the aircraft and use the radios. A number of years ago, I don't know, a couple of decades ago at this point, uh, they got rid of that requirement, so we don't need a radio station license. However, if you're going to go outside the United States, uh, like down to the Caribbean or somewhere like that, you need that, uh, that second R, or the radio station license. It's easy to get from the FCC, no big deal, but we don't need it today. Um, the next letter and arrow is the O for operating limitations, and that's all in here. This is the pilot's operating handbook and it has all of our operating limitations in it. It's inside the aircraft, makes us legal. Uh, and then the last letter is the W, weight and balance. Um, and again, it's in our documentation. We have a current weight and balance document. And before you do your flight, you wanna make sure that you've done your weight and balance calculations and you're all within those limits. So that's the documentation check, arrow. All right, the next part of our pre-flight inspection uh, takes place here in the cockpit. Um, so we are just going to lower the flaps 
and so that's going to help us. There's our flap lever. We're going to put them to the full down position. That's going to help us later during our walk around to give them a good check on the outside. And we're also going to turn on our master switch and all of the exterior lighting of the airplane. And we're going to do a quick walk around checking to make sure our lights work. All right, so we're going to turn on the master. While I'm turning on the master, we're going to look at our fuel gauges just to verify that they come up. That's all good there. I'm going to turn on our pulse light so we can check that our landing gear pulses like it's supposed to. And let's see, nav lights on, strobes, and the anti-collision. All right, let's go for a walk around the airplane, and we'll take a look, and we'll see if all these are working. All right, come with us now. All right, just a quick walk around while Brian makes his way down from the wing there. Good. He's coming around the airplane quickly. Now we're running the battery. We're running this on the battery now, so we don't want to take a whole lot of time with it. Just checking sure we got a strobe. We've got a green nav light here on the one at the right wing tip. A quick walk around here. We've got our LED nose light, and we have a pulse light system, so that's working. We're testing the pulse light, pulse light system and the bulb itself. That's good. Coming on around. Going to give the stall warning a quick test. That makes a noise, and it's easy to operate, so that's good. Very bright here on the strobes. We have operating strobes. The red light on the left wing tip. Here we go to the back. We have our, our beacon on the top, which we want to have on at all times when the engine's running. On the back, we have our white navigation light that's operating. So that's all good. The lights work. I'm just going to come back up here on the wing, go in the cockpit, and turn them off. Now there's one other thing here on the panel. We have a pitot heat switch and if we were going to be planning to fly in instrument conditions or any sort of visible moisture, rain or so forth, uh, I would turn that pitot heat on and part of that walk around I would check to make sure our pitot uh, blade is getting warm. I didn't do that today just because we're not going to use that, that feature in our flight, uh, but that's okay. All right, so beginning our walk around, uh, we're just going to do a, a logical flow. We're going to go around the aircraft. Uh, part of that is going to require a fuel strainer. We'll go ahead and grab that out of our luggage compartment here. This will come in handy in a minute. We're just going to start our walk around right where we stand with the right flap. Okay, so I'm just going to take a look at the flap. Check the actuating uh, rod here, making sure it's secure, making sure the bolt's in, the cotter pin's secure. I'm going to look down, I'm going to check all the hinges, bolts in all three hinges. They all look good. Okay, we can see that. So that's our flap. Moving on to the right aileron. I'm just going to move this back and forth gently, make sure it operates smoothly. We're looking at our control yokes to make sure they move in the right direction. Uh, and these flaps, I'm sorry, these ailerons have three hinges. Each hinge has a piano hinge pin in it. So I'm just going to look at that. I'm going to make sure all the nuts and bolts are attached. The piano hinge is secure all the way up the aileron. And all that looks good. All right, I'm going to move the ailerons so that the bottom's open. Up underneath is the actuating rod. Just giving that a quick touch to make sure the bolts are in place, they're secure, the cotter pin's in, and that moves freely, which it does. Okay? So that's our right aileron good. And just walking around the wing tip, making sure that the wing tip is uh, all in one piece. If the airplane's parked outside, it's important to look at these, these ends of the airplane to just make sure that nothing's bumped into it, a fuel truck or other air, aircraft or whatever. In our hangar here, it's pretty safe. But we just want to make sure it's uh, all in good shape. This is also a good time just to look down the wing. Is it straight? Do you have any wrinkles? Has the last person who flown this airplane overstressed it? You could see that if the, air, if the wing had any wrinkles in the skin. But we know this airplane's been taken care of. We know it's in good shape. I don't see any wrinkles. All right. Leading edge. General condition. Looks straight. It looks like nothing's banged into it. 
and that brings us up to the fuel tank here on the right wing. So I'm just going to take a look inside. Don't know if you can see that, but it is full. It is all the way up to the top, and that's what we like to see. All right. Well, fuel, fuel capacity on this airplane, we have 24 gallons of fuel in this tank. We have 24 gallons of fuel on the other side for 48 gallons total. And I guess now's a good time to talk a little bit about fuel. Um, we typically don't operate this airplane at maximum gross or anywhere close to it, so we usually have full tanks when we begin a flight. And one of the things about having full tanks is by and large you're going to have enough fuel to do what you need to do. Over experience we've learned that this airplane burns about eight and a half gallons an hour. It holds 48 gallons so if we were to run this airplane all the way out of fuel that is five hours and 40 minutes worth of fuel and I don't think anybody could stand to be in there for five hours and 40 minutes. That's a long time. But for our planning purposes what we typically do what we always do, I don't want to say typically, is plan for no more than four hours of flight. And the way we do that is we begin on whichever tank, let's say we begin on the right tank, we fly that for an hour, this is the way I do it, fly that for an hour, switch the fuel selector after an hour over to the other side, run that for two hours, and that is the first hour brings it down so that it's even with the right tank, and then another hour, that's your second hour on there, and then at that point, we switch the tanks for the second time back to the right side. We've already run it for one hour first. That gives us one more hour on this tank. That's four hours total. We don't fly more than that. And that always gives us at least an hour and 40 minutes of reserve fuel. During the daytime VFR, we're required to have 30 minutes. So we have an hour and 40 minutes reserve. We don't have to worry about fuel. And we keep track of that on our wristwatch. We don't like to rely on our fuel gauges either because when our fuel gauge is accurate according to the certification, when they're empty. And that's the only time. So that's not very helpful. So keep track of our fuel with our wristwatch. It works and that's just a stress that we don't have to worry about. Alright, so moving to the bottom of the tank. There are a couple of features under here. An important feature is this little guy right here. This is the fuel vent. So you want to make sure that vent is open. So as fuel burns, it needs to draw air into the tank to displace the fuel that's going away. And if that's plug plugged up right there, that can cause you problems. So you want to make sure that's open. Then over here, this is the uh, fuel drain. This is the lowest point in this fuel tank on the right side of the aircraft. And what we're going to do is take our fuel strainer. We're going to attach it here like that we're going to drain some fuel out. All right if we had any water in the fuel the idea is this is the lowest point in the system on this tank any water is going to show up by coming out the lowest point in the fuel tank it's going to show up as bubbles in the bottom of this fuel strainer. Um, so right here I don't see anything in here except for fuel there's no bubbles and we're also looking to make sure this fuel is blue. 100 LL aviation gasoline, which is what we're using, is blue. So if you have blue fuel in this airplane, you know that you don't have the wrong fuel in. Okay, so we're good on fuel here. While we're down here, we're going to take a look at our uh, wheel pant. We're going to take a look at our tire to make sure that it's inflated properly. Looks good. And it looks like our strut is inflated to its proper level. Uh, there's the compressed level, there's the static level, and way down where we can't see is the extended level that, that it would be in flight. But today, that looks great. All right. Coming up here, um, again, as we're doing the pre-flight, you want to make sure that you're taking a look at the overall big picture as well as the details. So we're looking at the right side of the cowling here. There's no dents, no creases, no damage. Bolts all seem to be in place. All good. I'm gonna take this cowling, open it, look inside. All right, so we have our cowling open here on the right side of the uh, engine compartment. 
this is a Lycoming carbureted engine. This is the IO, excuse me, the O, not IO. IO would be injected. This is carbureted. This is the O320. Uh, this is 320 cubic inches, uh, 160 horsepower engine. Uh, so we're just taking an overall look in here, making sure that we don't have any dents on our firewall, making sure the engine mounts is uh, straight and solid, bolts are in, looking for overall oil leaks, rat's nests, bird nest, any sort of contaminants that might be in here. Today this looks good. I don't see any issues. Uh, we got our spark plug wires. We're going to just give those a quick check there where they connected the spark plugs, all four of them on this side of the engine, making sure they're all secure. And one of the most important parts of this is checking the oil. So we're just going to take our oil dipstick here. This engine holds a maximum of eight quarts and a minimum of six quarts. And there's the eight, there's the six, and we are right in the middle at seven quarts. So that's perfect. If you put much more than seven quarts in this engine, it tends to blow it out the breather overboard. Seven quarts is a good amount for us. And also when you screw this back in place, it's got a rubber O-ring. Just want to make sure you snug it up. Just give it a little tighten. I over tighten stuff, so I have to re restrain myself, but you don't want to over tighten this. All right, and that is pretty much it for this side of the engine. I'm going to go ahead and close it up. It's important to make sure these cowling latches get latched properly. It goes under and latch. You don't want that opening up on you during flight. Coming around the propeller. Um, we're just going to run our hands along the blades of the prop just to feel, making sure we don't have any nicks from any rocks or anything like that that might have jumped up and hit it while we're taxing around. Looks good. It looks straight. The spinner has to be on the airplane. If it's not on there, the airplane's not airworthy. So we check to make sure that all of our screws that hold the spinner in place are secure, and they are. And that looks good. Got our alternator belt back here, and I'm just gonna see if that's tight. Feels good. And again, looking in here, if this airplane were outside, this would be more critical, but you always wanna check. We're just looking in here to make sure we don't have any evidence of bird nest or other critters that might have moved in. This looks clean to me. Um, landing lights in place. Just making sure everything's straight, making sure we haven't crashed into anything while we've been taxiing around. Uh, the nose fairing is secure with its screws. I'm going to kick the uh, chalk out of the way for later. And we have plenty, have several finger widths of room here on the nose strut, showing that it's properly inflated. That's pretty much it for the nose. All right, we've moved around to the left side of the, of the nose. And again, taking an overall look just to make sure we don't have any dents or creases in the and the aluminum, this looks good. And just like we did on the other side, we're going to open this up. Check for bird's nests or anything. It all looks clean. Oil leaks, we don't have any oil leaks. Spark plugs, just give them a touch to make sure that they're not loose. Spark plug wires are intact. This is our brake fluid reservoir. Just want to open that up. Plenty of brake fluid in there, that's important. And just the overall appearance, uh, making sure we don't have anything obviously out of place. It's impossible to check for everything, but you just want to make sure that you're looking for the obvious anomalies. This looks pretty good. Close this one up. Again, making sure that these latches are secure. We do not want this opening up on us while we fly it off. All right, moving down lower. This is the fuel drain for what they call the gas collator. Uh, the gas collator is the thing that takes the fuel from the left tank and the right tank, brings it together into one place, and then from there we have a fuel pump, both electric and engine driven, and that fuel goes off to the engine through the carburetor. So this is the lowest point in the whole fuel system, so we're going to drain this out, checking for water, just like we did on the right tank. Again, making sure that's securely closed. No water there, no more contamination. 
and it's blue, so that's good. And also, while we're down here, another thing to look at is the exhaust stack. Uh, we just want to make sure that these are in place, making sure that there's no obvious damage on those. Uh, a lot of times the fuel guys will use the exhaust stack as a place to pinch off their, uh, their ground cable for when they're grounding the plane to fuel it. So we just want to make sure that that's all good and we're not clogged up or anything uh, like that. All right, so moving on along, this brings us down to the left wing. And again, we're just looking at the whole thing overall, making sure it's straight. We'll look at our fuel inside here. That's full also. And coming underneath, we have a fuel vent here, just like we talked about on the other side, making sure that's open. They're draining the fuel. So there are three fuel drains on this airplane, and we check all three. Okay. Again, blue, no contaminants, no water. Wheel fairing, struts inflated, tires inflated properly. Looking down the wing, it looks good. Now we have this. We have this jar of fuel. A lot of people dump that onto the ground, but our fuel strainer has a screen in it that will help us filter out any sort of little particles or water even if there's any water in there. We can dump this back in the fuel tank. Just pour it right in. That way it's not on the ground, you get to use it. I want to make sure these fuel caps are secure also. That's important. If your fuel cap comes off in flight, you have a low pressure area on top of your wing. You can actually suck the fuel out. So we want to make sure these uh, fuel caps are secure. This is our stall warning blade, I guess you'd call it. Um, if you get to a certain angle of attack as you approach a stall, the air flow across the top of the wing flips that up, turns on the horn. We heard that earlier. Again, underneath. This is our Piper pedostatic blade. We have a hole on the front. We have a hole on the bottom as a drain. We have a tiny little hole in the back for the static port. This is an all-in-one unit, pedo pressure and static on this airplane. So we just want to make sure all these three holes are clean and clear. Same deal as the other side. Checking the wingtip for damage, make sure it's secure. Look around to the right, excuse me, the left aileron. Checking our piano hinges, we got three of them. Making sure that pin is in there. All the screws are secure. Lift the aileron, make sure it operates smoothly, and check this actuating device. Onto the flap. We have three attach points, making sure the bolts are in those. They are in the actuating rod to make sure that's in place with its cotter pin and bolt. All right, moving along the side of the airplane. Again, no dents, no wrinkles. Bring us back to the tail of the empanage and Piper uses a stabilator instead of a stabilizer with a separate elevator. This is all one piece and the whole, the whole thing moves. So we just move it, make sure it moves smoothly and easily. And there are some bushings and attach points in there. And if we just take this very gently, give it a little wiggle up and down, back and forth, make sure it doesn't wiggle. And that shows that we don't have any excessive wear in the mechanism. Anti-servo tab on the back, making sure it's connected and all of its piano hinges, making sure it moves smoothly. Now, this has to do with the trim control, and it also has to do, it's an anti-servo tab, so it, it helps to keep the controls in the center. When you push the control off center, there's an air force on this that helps push, push it back to the center. And our rudder, 
the rudder is interconnected on this airplane with the rudder pedals and the nose wheel steering. So we can't move this back and forth because the nose wheel's on the ground. That's good. You don't want that to move. But we do want to look at it, check in our attach points, give it a wiggle, and make sure it's secure. Here on the tail, we're just going to take a look inside. We're going to look at the attach point for this control rod on the elevator. And I can see the bolt in there is secure. And again, we're looking for bird's nests, any sort of evidence of straw or critters that might be living in there. But we're, we're safe here, not here. Okay. All right, moving along to the uh, right side of the airplane towards the back. Again, just making sure there's no dents or creases. No evidence of the airframe being overstressed or overloaded. Um, making sure our antennas are all in place. We've got these communications antennas here. Up on the tail, we've got a DL antenna. Making sure that's in place. Um, if we want to get down here, we can take a look underneath. We have various antennas under the bottom. Um, you know, we have the uh, ADF, we have our transponder, just making sure those things are still attached to the airplane. And the last antenna, this one here, this one's important. Uh, this antenna is connected to our ELT, or Emergency Locator Transmitter. And that ELT is a device that's back here behind this plate in the back of the airplane. It's self-contained, it has its own battery, it doesn't depend on the airplane's electrical system, and if we have a, uh, an incident or the airplane experiences a sudden stop of more than, in the, in the case of this one, 2.3 G's, this will automatically turn on, and using its own battery, this antenna, it will send out a distress signal on 121.5 megahertz, that's the standard uh, emergency frequency that's monitored by uh, the Air Force, it's the, the Coast Guard, all sorts of agencies monitor that frequency. But also, this is a 406 megahertz uh, ELT. And what that means is in addition to the 121.5 distress frequency transmission, it also, uh, once every 50 seconds, for 24 hours, it'll send out a packet of data on 406 megahertz that is uh, going up to some satellites that are monitored by NOAA. And NOAA has this information uh, from us. We've registered this unit with NOAA. And if, no, if that satellite system starts to receive a signal from this unit, it knows it belongs to this airplane. It knows it belongs to us. There's emergency telephone numbers connected to it. And if there's an emergency like that, they can come get us and find us. Um, if we have an emergency and we feel like it hasn't been activated properly, maybe we did a nice landing in a field somewhere, we can still activate this system from a switch in the cockpit. So that's a nice safety feature of this airplane. Um, and that's it. We've done the full pre-flight inspection of the airplane, uh, checked all the major systems, made sure it's in airworthy condition, and we feel like it's good to go today. So that's all there is to it. Are you ready? We're ready. Okay. Person County Traffic, Cherokee 14 Foxtrot, departing runway 6, and we'll be departing the area to the southeast, Person County. See anybody landing?
Washington after one is time off.